Well, good morning and welcome to the kitchen. It's Father's Day and I'm going to fix a big old log rolling meal for my honey. Um, our daughter's coming up. Our son's not going to make it today. But we're going to celebrate Father's Day. So I have a roast cooking in the oven and I'm going to show you how uh, I'm going to make several things and I'm going to video each one of them but you'll only see it one day at a time. Today I'm going to make cabbage and uh, my daughter didn't like onions. She didn't like onions at all. Well one day she decided to taste of the cabbage and she found out she likes caramelized onions. So what I do on my cabbage, <clears throat> I cut my bacon up in my pot and I brown it till it's, it's browned and crisp. And then I add my onions in and I cook them until they're caramelized. Then I pour in some chicken stock and I shred my cabbage and I cook it, uh, actually I shred the cabbage in, toss it and then I add as much chicken stock as I think I need with onion and garlic powder, salt and pepper. So I'm going to bring the camera down where you can see what's going on and we're just going to make some good old southern smothered cabbage. Okay again I'm just going to use my little kitchen scissors and I'm just going to cut my bacon in little pieces and set this on the burner on medium heat so it'll start rendering the fat and crisping up the bacon and uh, I might snitch me a little bite to taste of. It's early in the morning and I haven't had any breakfast because I want to leave room for lunch. And sometimes a little snitch of bacon will tide you over. Now I'm just going to go ahead and get this on the stove and then I'll prepare the onions and the cabbage and let you see what I'm doing. Okay, when I'm going to cook cabbage, of course I wash it and um, I have a water machine that makes water that if I soak my vegetables in it, it takes all the chemicals and all off, but everybody doesn't have that. So I'm going to show you what you do. Wash it real good in the sink and then peel those outer layers off because a lot of times if they've sprayed it, with chemicals and you peel that off, you have less of a chance of getting some of that, okay? So we're going to peel those off and what I do, if I'm strong enough, sometimes my, my old lady kicks in and I can't, my knife's a little dull and I can't get it done, but I quarter my cabbage and then I take the core out. But this is a pretty good size one and I cut it uneven so I'll go ahead and do it like that. See, well this has got some, and it looked perfectly good, but look what's in the middle of it. I have to take that out. We don't want to eat any of that. No ma'am, we don't. That wouldn't be pleasing. There's some more of it right there, so let's get the brown out. You have to check and be sure. I mean, this might have been in cold storage at the store for a while, and I mean at the warehouse, and we don't have any way of knowing that. It was pretty on the outside. That's got a little bit in there too. I don't know what that little section is, but the rest of it's perfectly fine. So we're going to, I'm going to show you what I do with the cabbage. I just cut it to where you have pieces and I don't have any rhyme or reason to it I just want and I don't want it shredded like coleslaw because I want to be able to get me bite a cabbage when I want to bite a cabbage okay <clears throat> so that's how I do the cabbage and I'll finish that in a minute and the onions I've taken the little core thing off of all but one and I just do them in slices like that I cut my onion in half and in half again. I don't want this in a chop. I want more like slices because I'm going to caramelize them. So I'll finish getting all of this ready and I'll be back and we'll get the onions in to caramelize first and then we'll cook our cabbage. 
Okay, if y'all have noticed, the bacon is brown. Got lots of fat rendered. And I'm just going to add in my onions. I'll just stir them around in this good old bacon grease until uh, they render well, till they caramelize. And I'll show you, I want to literally brown caramelize. Then when I pour the chicken broth in, and it gets all that gritty off the bottom where they caramelize, and I uh, put my cabbage in to cook, y'all, that's the best cabbage you ever eat. And I'm going to make us some cornbread to go with it. And that's going to, uh, you see the icing on the cake here because you soft that good cabbage juice up with that cornbread. We'll be back in a little bit. Okay, the onions are caramelized. And I'm ready to add in my uh, bacon grease. I use the organic chicken stock that I get at Costco. And I'm just going to add it in. It. And I probably, I'm not going to use the whole thing because I don't have to have a ton of, do you see how it turns that caramely color? Oh my goodness y'all, that's going to be so good. I'm going to add in a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a tablespoon of onion powder. I'm only doing about a fourth of a teaspoon of salt right now because I want to be sure it isn't too salty. And I'm going to do a teaspoon of coarse ground black pepper. I'm going to get that stirred in and then we'll add our cabbage. And I'm going to put the lid on and just let it smother down. Now let me get a little spoon and see what my taste is. Here. Oh my, that's just about perfect. My husband will probably resalt his part but that's about right for me. So I'm going to turn my heat up to get it heating up. And I'm going to go ahead and add my cabbage in. I just got it all chopped, ready to go into the pot. And I'll keep just kind of gently stirring it until uh, it's all incorporated down into the juice. It'll, it'll shrink down, smother down here in a little bit and it'll have that juice all over all of it and it'll be delicious. Oh yeah, I can just taste it with my cornbread and right now. Put the lid on and let it start to cook. And I'll bring y'all back here in just a little bit. I love these pots. Now I know they're expensive and for those of you that have questioned or are asking, I never pay a full price for things. There's a place online called Food 52 or Foodie 52, and they put these on sale a lot of times for less than $99. You just have to watch your sale. Sir La Top will put a sale on. So will Williams Sonoma. Every piece of La Crochet or Staub that I own, I got on sale for a bargain price. I even found one piece at Goodwill. So if you want some good uh, cast iron that's enameled, that'll last a lifetime and be passed down to the next generation. Watch the sales and buy one piece at a time and it'll last you forever. And it cooks so evenly, I just love it. And another thing, when you put these lids on, you don't get a lot of odor all over the house, which I don't mind smelling my stuff cooking, but some people would rather not. It kind of seals it in there. So, just a little plug. Um, I'm not rich enough to go buy me a set of it, but I can buy one piece at a time, and I sure have enjoyed it. Now, I like both of them, but I love the black inside of these versus the light color that's in my La Crochet, because you can see the stains in it more. But anyhow, they both cook evenly just as well, and they're both made in France. All right, I'm going to let this cook, and I'll show y'all what it looks like here in a little bit. And I'm going to get on with the next thing that I'm going to cook. Okay, the cabbage is starting to wilt down. See, it's bubbling down, most of it. But I like, it would be what you call tender crisp at this point. 
that I like it smothered in salt. So I'm going to continue to cook it for a little bit and then I'll be back and show you and I'll show you a taste test. Okay y'all, the cabbage is done. Just look at that. Bacon and that yummy juice. Oh my goodness. I'm going to uh, I'm going to show you a bowl of it dished up, and then I'm going to taste of it for you. Okay, here's a close-up of the cabbage in the, in the bowl, and I'll be back in just a jiffy and taste of it. Okay, y'all, the best part of the whole deal is when you get to taste of it. So I'm going to get me a little taste of this cabbage. Man, it's got the bacon and the onions and all of that in it, and it's wonderful. That's good stuff. That is southern soul food. I don't have the cornbread made yet. I'd be dunking me some cornbread in that juice. So y'all come back each day because I'm cooking quite a bit today for Father's Day. And I'm just going to show you one dish per day. Is that cheating? It'd be too long if you watched all of it at one time. So, y'all come back tomorrow and see what else we had. In the meantime, I hope to goodness you've got food to put on your table today for Father's Day and you're not taking him out somewhere instead of putting forth an effort to cook good food and show your appreciation for all of his hard work and provision. I've been blessed. My daddy was a hard worker and he provided well for us all my life. And God blessed me with a husband that has always worked untiringly, never complained, and provided well. And now we're enjoying being retired. He drove to Houston for 45 years working. And now, he don't have to do that anymore, and I'm thankful. So, y'all show your appreciation today. Cook a good meal. Get your family around the table. You know, tell some things that happened growing up. Uh, let your kids know, let them know some stuff that they'll remember and chuckle about and, and, and think about what happened to mom and daddy when they were growing up and things that grandpa did or, you know, talk about it and share memories. Turn those phones off. They're not important. Make days special. In the world that we live in, anymore, nothing is a special day. Part of that's because we're spoiled and we can get anything we want any day of the year. When I was growing up, you got a little bitty birthday present and a few gifts under the Christmas tree and you look forward to that. But anymore, nothing is special and important. And I'm trying to keep those traditions alive at my house. I want my family to come and gather at my table and I want us to share our lives and the happenings of our lives and make some memories that should one of us leave, we'll have memories to live with. Y'all have a blessed day. Hope your Father's Day is the best one ever. And come back tomorrow and we'll have a little bit more of Father's Day because we're going to be showing you what we're eating for a few days in the future. God bless y'all.